Lord preaching be done by anyone. As such, it would behoove any aspiring preacher who wants to realize his or her highest preaching potential to go to that end, even if it demands a concentrated, pur purposeful dedication of considerable time and energy in this lifetime to preparatory Antaranga Bhajan with that long-term aim in view. Wherever we realize a real, wherever we find a realized exemplar of the full array of unalloyed devotional wisdom, the personages, external institutional rank or social status notwithstanding, there we will behold a perfectly holistic representative of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. Perceptive, truth-seeking people yearning for genuine spiritual substance are not impressed by any level of histrionic, institutional, upadi-reinforced, razzle-dazzle sermonizing. It may be argued that, well, we on various levels are all representing the movement in the making. Movement in the making means to progressively move the bungling bhaktas from the position of unaccomplishment to the position of accomplishment, from imperfection to perfection from impurity to purity. The idea is that the movement is like a hospital, gradually moving everyone toward the healthy, pure devotional ideal. Not that one should idealistically expect everyone in the hospital to be perfectly healthy and pure. That's all right. We shouldn't unjustly cast aspersions upon the sincere patients, sadhakas, though they, with all their frailties, have yet to be fully disinfected. The point, though, is that the doctors should be healthy and pure. The movement's Acharyas, leaders, coming in the Acharya Parampara, should be pure and self-realized. It is not that there shall be no subsequent generations of Acharyas. All the disciples are instructed to come up to the decontaminated, liberated standard of Acharya. The offenseless Shudanam Bhajan Sankirtan Anandi practically manifesting the pure attributes of an Acharya, who clearly ascertains, follows, and from the realized position, propagates the scriptural conclusions as per the decisions of the previous Acharyas, is to be considered a true, truly viable link in the Sampradaya's disciplic succession. There really can be no feasible makeshift or stopgap blind uncle vicar. Disciplic succession means from Acharya to Acharya or Acharyas, not from Acharya to umpteen gazillion blockheads who being too spiritually gutless to grasp the recognized esoteric method of unalloyed devotional realization prefer to parade about, presumably on the plea of para upakara, preaching any retarded, shabby, so-called philosophy that blunderbusses out from their internally bankrupt, institutionally bamboozled, busybodying brainlessness. Just as the series of crystal lenses, crystal clear lenses of a telescope, brings a distant image within the purview of our eyes, in the same way, a Sampradaya's transcendental heritage is brought into the scope of our understanding through a transparent medium a chain of pure and spiritually potent representatives of the Acharya Parampara. Dusty, foggy, flawed, warped, or impotent lenses will not do. A chain of lenses is as clear and reliable as its faultiest lens. To act as transparent medium means to allow others to clearly perceive the distending radiance of the Bhagavad Siddhanta by purely exemplifying the perfect application of the principles of Bhagavad Dharma as per Sambandha Abhideya Prayojan Vichar, on the basis of scriptural evidence and personal attainment. Acharya, Acharya in the Gaudiya line really means one who is fully Krishna conscious, who purely teaches the path of unalloyed devotional conduct, both external and internal, 
By personally imbibing and practically demonstrating the unalloyed, unconditional, loving, devotional ideals of the Brajvasis. Whether a Nitya Siddha avatar appears in this world as an Acharya, or a Sadhan Siddha having attained perfection in a previous life is reborn by the will of the Lord to act as Acharya in the service of the Sampradaya, or one or more individuals in the present life gain the spiritual fitness to exemplify the principles of Braja Prema Dharma for the benefit of others, the role of Sampradayak Acharya is not a matter of institutional rubber stamping. There's no question of institutional rubber stamping. The rubber stamping of gurus is in fact quite against the principles of Sampradaya. It indicates neither purity nor high caliber Krishna consciousness. <coughs> there actually has to be purity. And where there is purity coupled with realized Siddhanta based Rag Maya unloyed devotional expression, rubber stamping or no rubber stamping, there we may hope to see the actual current of the Sampradaya. No amount of institutional legislation has ever in the past ensured that the budding disciples will not get any other than Sadguru. Nor does such presently offer any reasonable assurance to that effect, nor can such ever feasibly, feasibly promise a foolproof approach to Sadguru in the future. Glaring testimony of this statement rests in the much less than unblemished post-founder Acharya institutional track record. What more need be said? One gets Sadguru by the grace of God. Having accumulated suitable Sukriti by lifetimes of inadvertent contact with agents of Bhakti, a fortunate Jiva becomes inclined toward the service of the Absolute. When Krishna who is seated as Paramatma within the heart, directing the wanderings of every living entity since time immemorial, deems one the object of his mercy, then only by his arrangement is it possible for one to get the feet of Sadguru, not otherwise. By the mercy of Krishna, one gets Guru, and by the mercy of a genuinely elevated Vaisnav Guru, one gets Krishna. The institutional rubber stamping of Guru, as well as the recurrently observed herding of unsuspecting fledgling devotional candidates into institutionally endorsed liaison with Sheikh Awash locally lionized ecclesiastically rubber stamped Guru figureheads simply boast of a preposterous overestimated shot at managerially manipulating, governing, or meddling with the entirely independent will of the Absolute. In reality, though, God's will is quite beyond the grip of any theocracy's ostensibly ironclad administrative edicts. Those who are God's sanctioned to get the feet of Sadguru will definitely succeed by dint of Providence's inscrutable transcendental system even without the aid of materially concocted religious legislative contrivances. And despite all the well-intended precautionary legislation, not, those not destined to get Sadguru in the present life, though associated with one or another preaching organization, will be frustrated time and again, even after repeated futile attempts. Of this, there is ample precedence. The shining example of devotees authentically empowered by Krishna Shakti to undeviatingly represent the teachings of the predecessor Acharyas will itself suffice to satisfy all institutional requirements. Aspiring Sampradayak adherents need only be siddhantically edified and alerted as to the standard Shastric criteria for ascertaining the fitness of Guru. That much institutional government governance is legitimate. Deviants and imposters will automatically be shunned and fall into disrepute. No